We were seated on a sun-drenched patio below blue and white striped umbrellas, the table laden with small plates and a bottle of French rosé and a bucket of ice. Marlena, Shelley, and Teresa settled in, talking about when the firm had helped Von Eck with the tasting room expansion and how much of a boon that had been to the estate. It was a soft sales pitch by Marlena, so I listened with half an ear tuned to their conversation, wondering what to say to Mackenzie, when I noticed her popping a green olive into her mouth, her lush lips closing around it. Her fingernails were short but painted a neat silvery white. I wanted to see those fingers on my skin, feel those lips pressed against my own. She was turning me on by eating olives. This was going to be a long, long project. I leaned back into the chair, closing my eyes against the late afternoon sun, my thumb running across the cool wine glass cradled in my hand as I tried to ground myself. You look happy, Mackenzie said. I opened my eyes to find her looking at me while the others continued to chat. With the rosé, she continued, the start of a blush or sun coloring her chest. I couldn't tell which, but I wanted to touch, to kiss, to lick that pinkened skin. I gave in, letting my eyes drop to where I'd forced myself not to look through the meeting, the beginning of cleavage so deep a man could get lost in it. I'd say the same to you. It's a great wine on such a great day. My eyes chased the flush on her chest, up her breastbone, and along the line of her neck, pausing on her full pink lips before settling on those deep blue eyes that pierced me. Fewer things are finer than the start of summer in Napa, she said. I could think of a few things finer than this right here with her. And she starred in all of those very naked daydreams. I'll drink to that, I said, lifting my glass to her. She brought hers toward mine, and our eyes caught. Her eyes widened, and in that instant, I realized this wasn't one-sided. She was in this feeling with me lust and something else. I didn't know what to do with these feelings, but I had to get away from them, so I quickly pushed back from the table and made my excuse about having to take a call. I knew Marlena wouldn't be thrilled with my leaving or my excuse. The client you're with is the only client you have, she drilled into my head. But at that moment, I didn't care. I needed air before I did something entirely nuts, like lean over the table and find out how that rosé tasted on Mackenzie's lips. I found the back hall inside the restaurant by the restrooms and paced a bit, trying to work the energy from my body. Back and forth, up and down, shaking out my arms as my fingers dusted my thighs. It was this crawling feeling, this urge to go back to her, to pull her somewhere quiet, somewhere like this. Hey. I pivoted on my heel, and there she was, like I'd summoned her. I stood there, dumbstruck for a moment before my brain kicked into gear. Hey, I said. Smooth, Ryan, real smooth. She stepped toward me, and I moved to get out of her way. My left step to her right one, and her right step matched my left. We were impossibly close. The tension I'd tried to shake off roared back, louder and stronger than before. Sexual, and that other something that made her irresistible to me. I could kiss her here, I thought. I could just kiss her and no one would see, no one would know. I leaned toward her, seeing how she would react, desperate to read every clue she would give me. Should I? Should we? My eyes bounced between her lips and her eyes, searching for her answer to the question I was asking without words. Her tongue darted out to wet her lips, and my eyes shot to hers. Her gaze was intense as the darkened hallway faded away. Yes, she was here with me. Our faces were scant inches apart, and I canted toward her. Her eyes blinked rapidly, then widened in surprise as she stepped back sharply. I was, I was, I was just going to the, the, the bathroom, she said. I stepped back as well, my arms swinging wide to invite her to step past me. Without another word, she scooted into the restroom and closed the door. I heard the lock click into place, and I sagged against the hallway in relief. That was a close call. I'd almost ruined everything. <laughs>